Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, just it's an exciting time in our program. We have the first day of spring ball in the books, and it went incredibly well. I think for the first time in uh, maybe since we've been here that our kids are so excited to play and practice football. I think we got ABC Channel 13's mic on. There we go. Thank you. Uh, but they're excited to practice football. They had such a great time. I mean, there's so much joy on the field yesterday. And I think in years past, there's been joy to get on the field, but it's been uh, largely to get away from our strength coach, Hans Straub. So the fact that they are that fired up about football is outstanding to me. Uh, but before we talk more about spring football, uh, it's my honor to introduce the new additions to our staff that I'm incredibly excited about. And the first one is going to be our offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, Marcus Tuiasasopo. Uh, before I talk about Marcus, the first thing I'd like to do is talk about the interest in our job. And it's, um, it's really interesting when you have a job open these days, the interest level you can get. And what I'd say that blew me away and really humbled me is how many people see what our kids are doing and uh, the progress that they've made and wanted to be a part of our staff. We had NFL assistants interested in the offensive coordinator job. Uh, I talked to a former NFL head coach about the job, and I was starting to zero in on people when a uh, friend reached out to me, a mutual acquaintance of Marcus and myself, and said, Tui is wanting to be a coordinator at the right place. And I think you should see if, if he would be interested in Rice. And, and at that time, I, I said, shoot, well, I got to fire my shot. And so I reached out to Marcus, and um, we had some mutual interest. We had a chance to fly him into Houston and talk ball. And we went to a couple meals, and, and it was just like, uh, just like we had picked up from 2007. Uh, most of you will know his career. Played at Washington, outstanding player at the University of Washington, and then played eight years in the league including the 2007 season with us with the New York Jets. And so I got to see him as a player. I got to see the meticulous notes he would take, the way he prepared and the energy he brought every day and uh, fell in love with him and uh, got to know his family a little bit, got to know his wife, Lisa, a little bit. And that was really cool to, to get him over here and just have a, a conversation over a meal. And then we started talking football and you look up and it's been six and a half hours and we got to go to dinner because we're on a schedule. And it was just amazing how, how like-minded we were, how we see the game. And uh, there was really three things that I thought were, were critical of the hire. And, and the first one was somebody that would see the game the way I do and want to work in lockstep with me. The second thing that I thought was absolutely imperative is it was somebody who had the capacity to plan and call the passing game. And that's exactly what Marcus is going to do with his West Coast background, as well as other backgrounds, great coaches he's had a chance to work under. And the third is I needed somebody who could grow the quarterback, build the quarterback room from the ground up. And it just became so clear to me that Marcus was the right one to do that during the interview. So thrilled to death we had a chance to, to bring him in and already get to see him working with our kids and the juice he has. Uh, it, it's just exciting. I couldn't be more excited about Marcus running our offense and being in the quarterback room. The next hire is Coach Jim Jackson. Uh, Jim has coached tight ends at the Division I level. He has also coached offensive line at the Division I level, and, and that's an important thing to me. We interviewed six people for the job, had, had some really good candidates that I was fired up about, but Jim was absolutely the right one. He, he won the interview. And I go back to times I had a chance to work with him. When I was at Stanford, he was at the University of San Diego, and he would come up and work our camps every year. I had a chance to watch him coach and develop young guys just over a two-day period every year. And he's an outstanding technician. And he also works the way we do, and he fits. And one example of the way he works is uh, in L.A., in Los Angeles, you have these 5 or 5.30 a.m. practices. And there's not many college coaches that get up and go to them. Uh, but if you want to see all the guys work in the area, that's what you do. You grind. And you may be at a practice till 7 at night, but you're going to be there at 5 a.m. And uh, I, I almost started placing coffee orders with Jim because he was the only guy that would always be at every one that I was at. And so, again, there might be a few other guys sprinkled in, but Jim Jackson was there every single time. So, again, works the way we do. Both these guys fit. Jim and his wife, Michelle, have two kids that were anxious to get down here, may be part of this Rice community, this Rice family. So, uh, again, incredibly excited to have these two on board. I think you guys are going to enjoy getting to know them. And right now, I will bring up Marcus.
Good afternoon. Thanks, Coach, for the, the nice words. I'm Marcus Tiasasopo, and I, I can't express how excited I am to be a part of this program and the opportunity that's afforded me by Coach Bloomgren. Uh, it was just a, a, a huge opportunity that my family and I, we couldn't pass up. This game of football has been a part of my life uh, from the beginning. Uh, my father played in the NFL. Uh, I had the opportunity to be blessed with that opportunity to learn and play at a high level. And then now to be able to coach it and to express to the guys uh, in, in that way, the passion that I have for the, this game and the love that I have for this game and, and ultimately to see them develop into who they want to be. And that's a championship level football player and a, and a great outstanding student athlete. And so uh, when Coach Bloomgren gave me the call uh, and presented this opportunity, uh, it was an easy decision for me and my family. And, and this is why uh, to me, there's a football side of it, the X's and O's, but how I see this is it's all about people. I mean, uh, there's tons of experience in this building and the X's and O's, we're gonna have fun figuring out what fits our team. But to me, it's all about the people. And that starts with our head man. And so uh, the way he was when, on our interview and, and how he expressed how he relates to our team and to, to the staff, it, it spoke loudly to me that that's what I wanted to be a part of. And that's where I wanted to continue to grow and develop as a young coach was to learn under him. And then when I got here and to see uh, the rest of the staff and meet them, the warm welcome that uh, they, they showed me and my wife as she came and searched for a place to live around this great university uh, was second to none. It just, it just confirmed you know, what I thought and, uh, and believed the Coach Bloomgren. Uh, this is a great staff. I think the opportunity arose because they were doing big things. And so being able to come to a place where there, a lot of hard work was put in and we're right at a great spot where we can continue to build and take our program to the next level, uh, that excited me. And then to see who the people were that were developing uh, the guys on this team, along with Coach Bloomgren, uh, I, I see why we're at the same spot. So that was very apparent to me. And that was that's something that I wanted to be a part of. And so I just can't say enough. And uh, thanks to the, the Rice family. Uh, I'm so fired up to, to be here in this role, to work with the other men in, in, on the offensive uh, unit. Um, it, it's been fun so far. I've been here like a week and a half, but man, it, it's gone fast. Uh, yesterday's practice, uh, the, the juice, the energy that the guys bring, to see the way they work. Uh, it, it's unbelievable for me to be here at this point. Take some questions for Coach Tui. Just remember, please uh, close your mic after you ask, ask your question. Open the floor. Coach, I wanted to ask just why Rice? Why come come from, uh, you know, Cal and, and any other stops you made? And why, why are you here at Rice now? Uh, why Rice for me? I, I think it goes back to, again, um, the people involved. I think obviously there, um, for me, you know, I've been looking for an opportunity to uh, expand my uh, responsibility and role. Um, I love believing in young men. I love this game of football and to be able to express that passion in this role is, uh, was an opportunity that I was looking for. But more importantly, I had to be at a place where, you know, I believed in the head coach and the direction of the program and, 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 and how he's going to build that program. I want to be a part of something that's going to be about young men uh, developing. I want to be a part of a program that's that's working to build a championship level team on and off the field. And, you know, Col Coach Bloomgren, that he embodies that. And so uh, whether it was on the West Coast and the South and Northeast, it, it wouldn't have mattered where it was when Coach Bloomgren called. Uh, we had an opportunity to uh, be together back in 2007 when I, I was a player at the New York Jets. And so that's when I first met coach and I saw the way he worked. He was a quality control coach. And I don't know if very many people know much about that position at the NFL, but you, you get worked. And so I, I don't know how much sleep he was getting every night. And as a player, we recognize that work because Bloom was the guy sending us the game plans on Monday and Tuesday night. And, uh, you know, he was doing everything. ROC, Brian Schottenheimer had asked him. So as a player, you notice that and you get to know them. You talk to them because you appreciate their hard work for you. And so, again, that's where we start off. So going through the years that we've coached against each other and, and all this success that he has had, 
Uh, you know, we'd connect on the field before and after the games. We would connect on the road recruiting, and we would connect at the coaches' convention. And so we, we've stayed in touch. And so when he called, and it's like when he called, you're like, man, that's, a, that's far away from home. That's what you think. But he makes you feel at home, and, he, and you know that's the program he's building. And then when you come here and you get to meet everybody, it doesn't feel far away from where I've spent my recent uh, life. And so it's, it's, it's an awesome opportunity for me and my family to come to Houston to experience a new part of the country and to continue to grow as a coach. And co it's, it's really a tribute to, to coach and what he's building here. So that, that spoke to me. I wanted to be a part of it. Uh, a group of young men that's trying to transition and build a program from the ground up and to see where those guys are at and to see how hard they work. I mean, day one when I got here, I mean, there was 85, 95% of the team working out on a day off. And just I, I just walked in the weight room, saw how they worked, the passion they brought, how they were pushing each other. And that's I want to be part of that. And so that was apparent to me. Marcus, in a nutshell, <clears throat> how would you say define the way you would put your stamp? I think I missed your last part of that question. Can you repeat it, please? I said, uh, how would you define the way you would? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. How would you define the way you would put, uh, you will attempt to put your stamp, or put your stamp? Well, the nice thing is that uh, there's been a lot of uh, hard work done already. There's a great foundation. And uh, I think what Coach Bloom runs about intellectual brutality, that speaks to my heart. I played quarterback, but I was raised by a defense alignment. So the physicality of this game is ingrained in me. So I played, when I played, I played the position like that. And I had to learn some things, the finesse part of the game. So uh, I fell in love with that part of, of, of this uh, offense and this opportunity. Is that hey we're gonna we're gonna run the ball, and we all know if we want to win championships you've got to win the ball and we got to get got to control the tempo and the clock, the time of possession has to be on our side, and I think just my upbringing uh, we have similar backgrounds and who we've learned from, I mean really when I started learning offensive football it started with the Raiders John Gruden, I mean I I've been taught by some great coaches and uh, guys like David Shaw Jim Harbaugh, Norv Turner. So all those guys, that, you know, I've, I've taken something from every stop of the way. Guys like Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, th these are guys that have pushed the envelope of, F, uh, of the offense, push the ball downfield, but also be smart. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue to build off what we've done well in the past. And we're going to continue to make sure we put our best players in the position to succeed. But, you know, we, we can't do that without running the rock. And so obviously – um, it's not just about running because when you run the ball, hopefully you can suck the internal um, defenders up and you can throw it over the top. And we have a great staff here and we're going to figure out the best ways to do that with our best players. You ran, off, you ran off a bunch of those names. Who, who would you say um, has made the biggest impact on getting you where you are now? Uh, I don't know if I could pick just one of those guys because they're all special in their own right. But I, I can probably, you know, take off a few of the um, the characteristics that I that I, I took away from being coached by those guys. And I say with John, it's really about protection. You know, about protecting the quarterback, make sure that we don't get our quarterback hit. And he 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 ingrained that in me. And so protection has always been number one. So if you're going to play quarterback here, you're going to learn protection before you learn any pass play. And so uh, I learned that from him. Uh, guys like David Shaw, just, I think, poise, cool under pressure. You know, he, and he taught me, hey, if, if I'm out of control, if, I, if I'm too passionate, then, then how are you going to be? You know, I know you're going to be excited, so I'm going to be cool, calm, and collected for you so that when we, when we talk about the game on game day, I'm giving you great information. I think from guys like Coach Sarkeesian, I think – having fun while still playing at a high level. You know, football does not have to be drudgery. Passion is okay. Having energy is okay. And pushing the ball down the field and doing it in a smart way where you can execute and not hold on to the football. Those are some things that I've taken away from the coaches that have coached me. 
Hi, Marcus. How did your transition to tight ends coach last year under Bill Musgrave's offense prepare you for more of the pro style that Rice has? It, it made the transition real easy because we had transitioned from more of a spread into Coach Musgrave's uh, NFL uh, run the ball first, control of clock, uh, power run game. And so being able to come here and, and talk with Coach Bloomgren and, and the direction of this offense, uh, it, it was almost like lockstep. And so being able to step in here and, and talk about run game and how we're going to relate it to our play action pass game and drop back game, uh, it made that transition seamless. Coach, one of the first things that Bloom mentioned when he was introducing you is uh, getting you in the quarterback room. You've had the pleasure of working with a lot of really good quarterbacks uh, at this level and the NFL level so far. Um, how, how have you kind of looked at the guys that you have in the room right now? And then, then what do you think kind of you can bring uh, to such an important position group? I think the most important thing about this situation now is that there's a clean slate for those four young men in the quarterback room here at Rice. And, and, and I want to provide that presence and create that environment that, hey, anytime there's change in your life, there's an there's a opportunity to get better. And that's how we should see life. And so, uh, like I said before, there's a great foundation here. And for those guys specifically, it's an opportunity to continue to compete because whether it was good or bad last year for those guys, it doesn't matter. Learn from those, apply what they need to apply, and let's go out and see who can be the best guy this year. And so I'm trying to bring that energy with them uh, continue to teach them the game of football and really hopefully get them to really push themselves while stay a, a complete unit together. Awesome. Thank you guys so much today. I appreciate it. I'm really excited to be here. Um, you know, when we got the call from Coach Bloomgren a couple of weeks ago and just the, the idea to get to come down here and coach with him and like he's been a mentor of mine for, the, for my coaching career over the last eight to 10 years, somebody that I really look up to and was a great opportunity uh, and when, when he called and, and offered me the job. Um, it's funny being from Texas, you know, I went to high school at Motit, Mesquite Poteet High School, played for my father there. My dad was the head coach at San Marcos High for a couple years. He was the head coach at Dallas Adamson for a couple years and was a heck, Texas high school football coach and teacher for 42 years, 43 years. Um, my mom, the same, taught in Texas high schools for about 18 or 20 years. So you know what Rice is growing up. You know the academic standards that they have here. You know the quality football that's been played here. And like, truthfully, that's, what, that's where I wanted to go coming out of high school. I wasn't quite good enough to play at Rice, but um, you know, got an opportunity to play in the Ivy League as well too. But this is a great place. This is a special place. And getting here for two weeks or three weeks that I've been here, it's even better when you get here. Coach Bloomgren has been amazing. It's a total first-class organization. And um, I'm really excited to be here, being from Texas and, and knowing all about Rice growing up. Uh, Coach, Bloom talked about uh, your experience on the offensive line and, and the tight end group. Um, you mentioned looking up to Bloom so far in your stops. How has kind of all your preparation to this point kind of made you ready for taking this jump? No, that's a great question. Um, when we were at the University of San Diego, I was an offensive line coach, run game coordinator, and a co-coordinator as well. Um, we wanted to be Stanford South. That's how we marketed ourselves to recruits. Um, it's a, it's a situation where it's a similar offense that we ran, almost exactly the same. And, you know, you take your little twists on it and do your things with it that, that fit your personnel and your system. So just watching what they were doing and then him investing in, in my career and in us down at USD, that was important to me. Because, you know, the longer you coach, the more you realize not everybody has to do that. And I think that was important just knowing that he was investing in, in, our, in my career and us at USD. Um, from a preparation standpoint, I think coaching in a bunch of different systems, that helps you only become better to understand what's best for Rice University, what's best for our offense. And that's the intellectual brutality scheme that is run the football, play action pass, play great defense, and win, win that way. And I think that's important to know in those regards. So that's great. Thank you. And I guess it's only been a couple of days, a week or so, but uh, have you had a chance to look at the room you have? You got a lot of versatile guys that can do a bunch of different jobs. Yeah, you know, and like, it's, it's very similar to Coach Tui Asofo. It's a clean slate for a lot of these guys. The one thing that is cool is they've played a lot of football in this room. So experience is golden. You know, there's a lot of older coaches that have taught me, like, you can't trade experience at all. And that's important to know. 
my job and our goal is to put them in positions of strength and then to build off of that experience too. Let's take the next step in their evolution as players. So I think that's a, you know, it's a little early to make statements about specific players, I think personally, but um, it's, it's awesome to know the experience. That's been great in the room for sure. Uh, Boom, I'll, I'll, I'll start on the, uh, what the offense looks like. Uh, we talked to you, you talked about shaking things up and kind of putting some new pieces in. Now that you have some new coordinators, uh, what changes as far as y'all's offensive approach? I, I know you've, you've, you're going to keep the, the core of the intellectual brutality, but there are, are there any things in specific that you thought, you know, bringing in guys like Jim and Marcus would, it would enable you to do better? Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think anytime, first off, if, if you guys know me, like I don't love change by my nature. Uh, so I'm never like really excited when, when a coach is moving on, even for a great opportunity, you know, I get happy for them and their family, but I'm always sad for myself. But then, you transition and bring in other great people with other new ideas that are different from what you've done. And it just, it really brings on this great dialogue. That's just unbelievable. And so whether it's bringing in a guy like Jimmy Jackson and having him talk about how he did it at different places, offensive line wise, or this protection or that, or when he coached tight ends, how they ran this route, that's just, that's the kind of stuff that I love as a football junkie. And then you bring in somebody like Marcus Tuiasosopo with his past background and his ability to lead men and the conversations that we've had in just the week and a half he's been here have just been next level stuff. So I know your question is like, actually, what is going to be different when we watch the Rice offense? And I think what I would tell you is that from a fundamental standpoint, both of us start from the same system, from the same West Coast system that, that obviously Bill Walsh started and John Gruden kind of brought into what it is today as Tui and I know it. Tui played for him. I had the opportunity to learn the system from David Shaw, who coached with, uh, with John Gruden as well as with Bill Callahan. And so, uh, again, that's kind of where those things merge together. Now, Tui and I were in the digit system under Brian Schottenheimer in 2007, so we know that one very well. And that's a, a little bit different system than the West Coast, a lot of similar principles. And then since that time, in the 14 years we've been apart, Gosh, Tui's been on these unbelievable staffs at the University of Washington, at UCLA, at Cal, at USC with Sark, you know, two different times. Uh, Marcus was the, the head coach of the bowl game when Sark took the job at USC from Washington. So he was the uh, interim head coach for the bowl game, and I believe it was 2013. He's 1-0 as a head coach. If I get thrown out of the game, we're in good shape, right? Like, so there's so many positives to Tui. Uh, but so fundamentally or foundationally, how will we be different offensively? Uh, I don't know that we'll be tremendously different scheme wise. He's got some great ideas RPO wise, which I'm always trying to grow in as well. So maybe more of those sprinkled in. Uh, he's just such a master of coaching the quarterbacks. So I, I don't know that every, anything will be tremendously different X's and O's wise, but it's going to be taught a little differently by a guy who's played the position. And, you know, I'm just really excited about the direction of our offense. Hey coach, you talked about excitement and, and I know, you know, I heard Coach Tui Asasopo talk about running the football when he likes to throw the ball. So I'm just wondering, you know, what are your thoughts there and being able to have a, uh, an offensive coordinator who can do a little bit of both? Yeah, so pound the rock, control the clock, and play great defense, right? We know the formula. We know what wins championships. And, and again, I think I've seen it work at every level of football. So I believe so firmly in that. So when a, a quarterback slash offensive coordinator says those words, does it fire me up? Absolutely. Now, Nate, do I know that he still wants to throw it down the field and over the wall, as Al Davis used to say when he was a player? Absolutely, he does. But let's not forget that Marcus was, if not still, the only quarterback in history to rush for 200 yards in a game and pass for 300 yards in a game. So you talk about balance and being able to attack a defense. Marcus knows a little something about that as a player and now as a coach. On the coaching staff front, uh, Marcus to OC and, and Jim at tight ends, any other uh, changes that you expect? There are uh, a couple others. So the, the position that was created uh, for Jim Jackson at the tight end spot was made by Drew Sabota leaving from Memphis and us elevating Chris Monfaletto to our special teams coordinator spot. I'm not certain if we've announced that one publicly or not, but that that is what opened up the tight end job. And uh, we've lost a couple of our, our younger guys to, to full-time jobs that I'm excited for them to get. Quinn Billerman moved on to Duke University back in his hometown. Uh, he was an offensive QC for us for three years and uh, certainly impressed and, and proud of his growth and excited for his next opportunity. 
So it's just like when players move on, when people move on for those GAs and QC roles, you're just so excited uh, to watch them go fly and do big things. But in terms of uh, other staff changes right now, uh, that's what we're working with. And a uh, couple other things that, you know, I, I look back and uh, at this search and how everything came to be. And, you know, again, I, I just couldn't be happier with the two candidates we landed on. And, and I'm so thankful for the guys that will always take my call out there in the world and let me bounce ideas off of them or ask them who they think we should look at as candidates. And uh, that's just an unbelievable resource. Mike, when you go in this spring, is, is I know there's a zillion things that you're, you're focused on. Is there one or two that, that are at the top that are paramount that you focused on right now? You know, I think as we enter year four, it's, uh, it's really clear to me that we have got to continue to take steps with unity as a football team. And I think it's something that we all have to talk about at all times. Uh, we just want to continue to grow this culture. And the next step for us is to have guys that can lead and have the courage to lead each other. And, and understand that, that uh, something that's maybe tough for this generation is the ability to receive feedback and uh, to give feedback to their peers. And that's something that we're really focused on. Now, there's always going to be the spring goals of mastering our system, being able to teach it from an X and O standpoint, mastering the techniques and understanding when to use them because they're tools in your tool belt and when it's appropriate to use it and how to do that technique. And then lastly, you know, your eye progression. That's something that I think we can't teach enough to these guys. And that's pre and post snap, regardless of what position you play. Are you using your eyes? Are you gaining all the knowledge from what this, the other side of the ball is telling you pre-snap? And then, of course, making the right read post-snap. Has it I, – I, you've talked about over the years kind of the relationships that you've built up. Um, as you've gone along the way. Now, a couple years in, you've, uh, your staff has you know, almost turned over, brought in a lot of new faces over, over four years. Is it kind of remarkable to you um, that you've been able to, okay, I need to do, find a new person to coach X, and you can scroll through your phone and you see a long list and people are calling you with recommendations? Is that ever kind of a place you thought you'd be? Yeah, I don't know that we'd ever be able to have a candidate pool that looks like these. That's that's the thing that, again, humbles me so much, Matt. Um, yeah, I think replacing people, like we've done a good job putting people in line to grow into roles, right? Like Mike Kershaw the first year was a volunteer, and then he became our receiver coach. Sanders Davis we brought in as a GA, and then he becomes our offensive line coach. Chris Monfiletto, after being seven years as the head coach at Kenyon College, comes in and volunteers. Then we get him to a QC role. Then he's our tight end coach. Now he's our special teams coordinator. So we're really training a lot of people from within and preparing for those. But when you have a big job open, like the offensive coordinator, and uh, I wanted some fresh ideas to come in the building, that's when those relationships that, that I'm so fortunate to have come into play. Uh, I mean, I reached out to four people, really. I reached out to David Shaw. I reached out to Pep Hamilton. I reached out to Mike Tannenbaum. And I reached out to Brian Dayball. And I said, who would you recommend me talk to? And – you know, what's interesting is everybody had a, a possibility or an idea. And, um, you know, then Marcus came into play. And so I went back to all those people and I said, what would you think of this? And, um, you know, everybody's like, oh, that could be really good. Dave Shaw was different. Dave Shaw, who, again, coached Tui in Oakland, I worked with for seven years. Uh, he said, oh, Bloom. And I didn't know where he was going with that. He said, oh, Bloom, that would be like crossing lightsabers in Ghostbusters to kill the marshmallow man. And I had, to, I had to process that for a second. You know, me and Dave are kind of nerds and love Star Wars and, and different movies. But the Ghostbusters reference took me back. But once I understood what he was saying, that we were going to unite and make a very powerful team, uh, I was on board and I knew he was too. So that's kind of how that conversation went. Randy, you got a question? Yeah, hey, Mike. Sorry, I didn't want to jump in. I was coming in and out. Uh, good to see you again, man. Hey, uh, if you can, just to, with the, the growth of the program, if you don't mind hitting on just, and I've talked to you about it before in the past, but I, I always like to follow up on how it's paying off dividends now when it, when it comes to, to the recruiting front and how important that is now and looking ahead and, you know, the Rice brand that is really out there and the message you're sending. What, what, what kind of response are you getting now when you look back, you and your staff, when you look back at uh, the reach of recruiting as people see the progress with the program? Yeah, I think that's really exciting, Randy. And I think where we see it a lot right now is in the portal. And 
it used to be we'd have to really monitor the portal. And when somebody went in, we'd send them like an introductory text like, hey, do you have interest in us? And, you know, if, if the first question they asked was, is where's Rice or something like that, we knew that probably wasn't going to be a fit from an academic standpoint because you can't see all the academic information in the portal. Uh, but if they know who knew who we were, we'd go down the road and we'd try to research them. But now it's really cool because those people are reaching out to us, either through contacts that we have out there or, you know, I look at Tui and, and all the people that he's worked with on the West Coast and that love him and think the world of him, they're reaching out. I mean, we could form a team from the transfer portal right now if we had the scholarship and bandwidth to do it. Like there's, there's a, a plethora of people that are dying to join this program. And that means everything to me. And, and you go back to the high school success that we're having. Uh, it's so, so largely in part to Alex Brown and his staff doing a great job. I, I'm just so thrilled with the direction. And, you know, for the class of 22, Randy, right now, it looks like we're going to have a very like single digit amount of scholarships available because of the COVID rules and extra year of eligibility. So we're going to be so selective and so slow in this class. But I was on a recruiting call last night with a young man and his family. And he's got offers from the in-state in Big 12 teams. Maybe he doesn't have UT, but he's got a bunch of them. And, you know, he's sitting there, and he is seriously thinking about becoming an owl. I think he's really close. And, and nothing excites me more than those kids and their families when they get excited about all the things that we can offer them on and off the field. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, coach. Um, so I wanted to take a look at the the quarterback situation. Obviously, uh, you know, you got like a, you got a new guy like Jay Constantine, Giovanni Johnson's in there. But um, especially with now with, with Marcus coming in and obviously he's going to have a lot of control over the quarterback room like he talked about. How do you how do you uh, see that uh, that competition uh, playing out over the spring? Oh, I'm excited for that competition. And, and just, you know, we got four of those guys in. You know, and I think it's worth talking about all of them. Wiley Green, who started for us, uh, gosh, I can't even tell you how many games, probably eight to ten games in our time here. He gets a fresh start with Marcus, and I think that's been really good. And to see his juice at practice yesterday was really cool. T.J. McMahon comes in here. He's a different player now. He really has a grasp of our system. He made a great throw yesterday coming off of, on a naked. You do have Giovanni Johnson, who's, you know, gosh, he started the game when we beat Marshall. We have a lot of confidence in him. And then you bring in Jake Constantine. And, and Jake Constantine's such an uh, interesting case, right? You know, a guy that signs with Boise and then it doesn't work out. He goes to junior college at a place where they haven't had much success and he wins a championship. Then he goes to Weber State and uh, they win back to back championships and go to the final four in FCS. And, you know, he's just a winner. He's a competitive sucker that really loves this game and, and takes everything very, very serious. And, uh, it was nice to see him operate. I know he had some big eyes at times yesterday trying to uh, get all the kills and alerts correct, but uh, when he could just play football, it was fun to watch yesterday. If we're uh, looking at spring, what was it like getting out to practice and having more than one wide receiver available? <laughs> really nice. It was really nice, Matt. Yeah, we uh, – we had a, a really full football team. I mean, many of you guys will remember back to our first spring when we had 47 out there for spring ball. And, uh, you know, we were trying to get 11 on both sides healthy enough to go and so we could actually get the work we needed in. I believe we had 86 healthy yesterday, and we looked like a football program. And people were running around. And like I said, the, the juice was really good. We got 14 more opportunities this spring. We know how precious they all are, so we got to bring that juice every day. And then you, you and Tim both talked about leadership. Uh, got a couple of guys who, uh, who aren't returning. Austin go, going pro and, and Blaze moving uh, elsewhere. You have some, some voids at the captain spots. Obviously, you're not deciding those now. But um, have you noticed kind of some of those other guys stepping up and, and, and taking charge and, and being leaders? We have. Yeah, absolutely we have. And you mentioned the, the two that are gone, plus Garrett Grammer was also a captain. But the cool thing is we got two captains back. You know, to have Jordan Myers back and, and the way our team views him and loves him and to have Campbell Riddle back, those, those are two big things to have already in place. Now, when we look at those other guys that are starting to come up, yeah, I see guys like uh, Trey Schumann doing a great job leading the defensive line. I hear Antonio Montero. I, I hear a bunch of different guys in the secondary. It's going to be really interesting to see who becomes the leader in that group. 
uh, on offense, I hear Jake Bailey, you know, and, and a loud Jake Bailey, a confident Jake Bailey. And that's really cool. And, and if, Matt, I know you've been to our practice and you'll know what I mean by this. You can't come to one of our practices without hearing Kalen Griffin. So uh, the mouse always moving and uh, he backs it up. But no, there's a, a lot of fun going on at practice, a lot of positivity. Who those leaders will be, I can't wait to see. I think we'll have a much better uh, perspective coming out of practice number 15. And then I guess, is this spring four, right? Three, four? I'm losing track of the years. This is, this is four. Yes, sir. Spring four. <laughs> we, we talked about over the past couple of years, it was kind of establishing the foundation and, and getting everyone on the same page schematically. What's kind of the focus um, now that you have, especially with COVID, a lot of people coming back, you have people who know the scheme. Uh, what's the focus this year? Yeah, I, I think the scheme is still something that's important. And the thing about spring football is it's such an unbelievable lab, right? It is to take those different tools in your toolbox and, and try to learn how to apply them, try to learn when it's appropriate and try to see if you like that tool. So it's always going to be a lab. But the other thing is like, I'm on our coaches all the time to teach from the ground up, like assume nothing, like teach everything from the ground up because there's so many important details in those playbooks that again, if we can just get one more digested into these kids, uh, who knows, it might just win us a game. And the way we're challenging the players to know this system so well inside and out, like know it so you can teach it to your girlfriend is what we told them. Because that's when you really know you know it, right? Like when you are prepared to teach it, that's how we want you to know this thing because that will give you the ability to take it from the class to the grass and play football at full speed.